Incredible flights or absolute disasters. Over the years, every one of my Philippine Airlines flights fits into one of those categories, and today is no different. From the business class cabin, let's get into it. Welcome to Kuala Lumpur. If you would like to know the exact fare that I paid for my flight today, or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome, my name is Kevin. You found yourself on a channel that takes unbiased travel content pretty seriously. I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well. I always film without the company's knowledge to be sure I get a true experience. Then, I can give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. Except for the monsoonal torrential rains all morning, it's been quite a beautiful day here in Kuala Lumpur, now arriving at KLIA's primary terminal. I'm currently on an extended trip, which all began with this pair of flights that will bring me down to Sydney. At the time, it seemed like an incredible buy it right now deal, but now many months later, they're still selling tickets from Southeast Asia to Australia in business class for what seems like pennies. KLIA, or Kuala Lumpur International Airport's check-in hall, is organized in much the same fashion as any other large airport in the region, with rows upon rows of check-in desks for the 56 or so airlines that currently serve the airport. The check-in experience was quick and smooth, but I do think that the airport needs to simplify the check-in counter signs, since you could barely see them from afar, let alone know what they say. It has, thankfully, been a while since I've seen a sign like this. This regulation just applied for a small airport in the Philippines for some reason. Nothing related to today's flight or Manila. As with most non-Malaysian carriers here, our flight would be departing from the satellite terminal, but first we need to head through customs and immigration. Similar to Singapore's Changi Airport, security is done individually at each gate here. My favorite little aero train is under maintenance at the time, so I was making my way down to the bus on the lower level when I noticed this Starbucks. I think it's fairly new and my commentary has nothing to do with Starbucks, but if you're ever in the terminal without lounge access, this is quite the nice place to have a seat and watch the apron from. To the bus we go, which will take us from the main terminal on the left, to the X-shaped satellite on the right. Philippine Airlines, or PR, was founded in 1941 and has its primary base at Manila's Ninoy Aquino International Airport. Prior to the Asian financial crisis in the late 90s, PR was one of the larger airlines in Asia, but that all quickly changed. From 1998 until 2007, they were under receivership as they struggled to survive only to emerge just as the world was sliding back into a recession again. Currently, they fly to 48 destinations in 17 countries. In the past, they used to fly to multiple destinations in Europe, but they've since been cut since COVID. During COVID, they shed quite a few aircraft as well, including some newer ones, to right-size the operation, and last year, again, began achieving a profit. PR always seems to be somewhere on a roller coaster ride, which I'll get into more in my next Philippine Airlines video since that one was at the bottom of the roller coaster. Luckily for today, the roller coaster was at its peak. My fare today included access to the Plaza Premium Lounge on the upper level in the satellite terminal. The lounge is comfortable, has decent views, and a normally decent selection of food, 
though today doesn't seem to be replenished all that consistently. Before Plaza Premium and Priority Pass cut ties a few years ago, this lounge was always a chaotic mess, so today was actually quite pleasant. While some Plaza Premium lounges have since returned to Priority Pass recently, at the time of writing, this one is still not participating, while the plazas in the main terminal and KLIA 2 are participating. Have always loved the roof lines and the lights in the satellite. The terminal having been designed by famed Japanese architect Kisho Kurokawa. Filming anonymously, as in no invitations, no sponsorships, no freebies, and no special treatment. I think it's an important part of a balanced, unbiased review. Whether for a flight or a hotel stay or a cruise, if you support honest travel content, Please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe, the two easiest ways that you can help the channel continue to grow, so I can continue to put out this now three times weekly content. For those of you interested, my Patreon is linked below. Thanks very much for watching today. Time to get through security and into the gate area. Our 8-year-old A321 today has PR's standard regional configuration with 2x2 two two recliner business class seats. They do also have a version that they use for longer flights, even to Sydney at times, with a 2x2 two two lie flat configuration. Boarding began on time and was very quick with boarding passes having already been checked at the gate's entrance. As for today's flight stats, we took off a few minutes late for our three and a half hour flight up and over to Manila, where we ended up landing 36 minutes ahead of schedule. Hello. Thank you. The seats on board. While they are standard recliners, they're honestly one of the more comfortable and plush models out there. So I'm more than happy for this, and in fact, I think these seats, as seats, are more comfortable than their life flat A321 seats. Upon boarding, each seat had a pillow and a blanket, along with a menu card. The seats have decent recline, an adjustable headrest, and also have a USB and universal plug at each seat as well as individual overhead air vents. Very hot towels and pre-departure drinks were passed out, and I remembered very quickly of how good PR can be. As I mentioned in the opening, I think this was my ninth PR flight, and they are generally excellent or absolute crap and it normally comes down to three factors, the crew, the food, and the transit experience. On this flight, it was clear the crew was top-notch, super friendly and chatty, and exactly what you would expect when you think about Pinoy hospitality. We pushed back and then made our way to the runway, rain still in tow. Today, we'd be taking off to the north. The spool up and take off are coming up next.
and finally some blue skies. Let's quickly check out the creature comforts. The blankets are in that very specific category of kind of feels cheap, but it's actually really comfortable, so I don't really care about the quality. And the pillows were also nice and firm. Drink service started and they were passed out with some packaged cashews. Let's take a full look at today's menu. Please note that the red prices are my addition to the menu and are just to give you an idea of the wine value on board. The starter was a salad with smoked duck breast. Looks wise, we're not winning any awards today, but the calamansi cocoa dressing was one of the better dressings or sauces that I've had in quite a while. The main dish was the star today though, prawn cakes, a really simple dish that is really easy to screw up, but these were really, really good. Still bouncy pieces of shrimp inside, perfect balance of sweet, sour, and spicy, and well-prepared rice. The bread roll was soft and fine, and that dessert, while I don't know how that's a chocolate truffle, but it was pretty good. For in-flight entertainment, there are no screens on board, but there is streaming content available as long as you download the MyPAL app beforehand. Just connect to the Wi-Fi, open the app, and there's a decent selection of movies available, as well as an interactive movie map, which frankly was better than many that you'd find on board most airlines. The bathrooms were basic, with their standard assortment of branded potions and lotions, but it was all kept quite clean. Flying to or anywhere around the Philippines is always a treat, with thousands of beautiful islands all around you. Our approach today was a straight shot into a beautifully clear Metro Manila. Fun fact, did you know that Metro Manila is actually made up of 16 different cities? Manila City itself is the most densely populated city on Earth, and five of the top 10 most densely populated cities on Earth are found within Metro Manila. A quick taxi, and then I was off to the dreaded Manila transit experience. This first flight, though, was just about as good as it gets for an under five hour flight. Delicious food, really hospitable crew, comfortable seats, and early arrival. Not sure I could ask for that much more. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content coming up. With current three times a week postings, this week I've got the Kimpton Margo in Sydney and the continuation of this flight on an A330 to Sydney coming up this week. Oh, and thanks for watching until the end.